Welcome to Pure Isopod Bliss. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you're not familiar with what you are about to witness, it is a lengthy video of me feeding isopods. Some people have called it meditative. Some people have called it calming. Some people have fallen asleep to these feeding videos. Not because they're boring, but because they found my voice soothing. True story, I didn't make it up. Guys, we got another isopod feeding video here today. What's up everybody, my name is Dion and you are watching Reptiliatus channel. If you are new to this channel, I wanna let you guys know that this is a wonderful place where you can learn all about different types of pet reptiles, amphibians, and invertebrates. We got tarantulas, scorpions, isopods, centipedes, you name it. So if you're interested in any of those animals, please do me and yourself a favor and subscribe down below and then ding the notification bell afterwards so that you know exactly when the next upload is coming out and won't miss it. I usually upload about once or twice a week, trying to pick it up a bit, but we'll see how that goes. So without further ado, let's get into today's video. We are going to be feeding these isopods some beautifully cut, wrinkly old flat zucchini that I totally forgot to eat that I found in my fridge. Perfect thing to offer them because they are indifferent. They probably like things that are decaying and rotting. That's their ecological role anyways as decomposers. And we are also going to be giving them some Omega fish flakes. So let's get right into it because this is going to be a long video feeding the whole collection. And uh, yeah, as always, let me know in the comment section down below what you have for comments, questions, opinions, etc. I'm all ears and I'll do my best to get to them. All right, everybody. So the first isopods we're going to be feeding here are my Porcilio lavis orange. These are the orange form of the Porcilio lavis, more commonly recognized for the dairy cow variety. These isopods are doing super well. I noticed lots of mankai in here. They're usually hiding in the substrate. I found that they took a really long time to get going at the start, but now that they are, they are reproducing very quickly. So that's super cool. There's one of the little mankai walking around. You're so small. Oh, sorry. Oh my gosh. And that's just a little mite beside it. Can't really do much about those besides moderating how much you feed them. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and give them a piece of zucchini, which I'll place right there. And then we're also going to give them some fish food. Now, do your best to not overfeed your isopods. It's very easy to do. You just see the whole group of them and think, oh yeah, they're all so hungry, but they don't need a lot of food. You don't have to feed them too often. And if you give them too much food, that's what leads to mold problems and um, fungus mold and mites and things like that getting a little out of control so with the amount of isopods they have living in here there's probably about 50 to 60 i know that that's enough food for sure all right so here are my little survivors of the spatulatus as i've mentioned in previous videos i really don't have very many left um i might have to get more and then there's that lone hassie that just lives with them but yeah they they really weren't doing so great for me. Here they are, a few of them, just in there. Oh, there's a mite on him, get off. You know, honestly, they're not really bucking them that much. I was hoping that they'd be producing some mankai, but those are all dwarf whites that somehow got in the culture, which is pretty sucky. I mean, I don't know if those are opposite sex or not. We can certainly hope it'd be nice for them to reproduce. And I think there's like a handful of other ones still in there too. So yeah, just have to hope for the best here. But I'm going to go ahead and give them a very small piece of zucchini. Literally that. That's honestly too much. But I know the dwarf whites are going to eat it too. So I have to take that into account. And then a little bit of fish food. And that's all we need. Beautiful. All right, friends, so the next species we are going to feed here are my Porcilio expansus, which are super sought after, beautiful isopods, as you can see. Um, they're doing quite fantastic. A lot of growth on these juveniles, as you may recall from last time, they were pretty small, um, but they're definitely gaining some good size, you can see, running around, and uh oh, we have a deceased individual. This happens, it's not the end of the world. I'm sorry. They usually consume those, but I might pick it out in a bit. Um, yeah, so they're doing nice. Uh, lots of them hiding. I gave them a little bit of 
uh, seaweed earlier. Yeah, so they're doing pretty well. I, I won't add too much zucchini just because they have some food, but we can definitely put like a piece that big in and some fish food. All right, guys. There you go. And I'm just gonna also give them a little bit of a spray. Just a gentle spray. Beautiful. And we will move on. All right, guys, so the next isopods we're gonna feed here are the, I would say, Nagris cristatus, but it's supposed to be the R13 duckies. Last I looked, they were all under the moss. I think it was last night or so. There they are. You can see one there hiding. Little guy's just doing his thing. I don't want to mess with them too much. There we go. Hi, everybody. They're really, really beautiful. Super unique. And that's about the adult size there. Hello. <laughs> so, yeah, they bury into the moss. We'll let them just stay how they want to. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead, spray down the moss a little bit. And then we will give them a small piece of zucchini, bloop, right in there. And then we'll also sprinkle some fish food in, like so. All right, wonderful. All right, everybody, here are the Cubera species Borneo. And these guys, as I said in the last video, <laughs> need a rehousing. They're doing super nice. Uh, I'm getting lots of that, which is isopods mating. And there's a whole ton of mankai like hiding in the substrate. Best way to show you is literally this. You can see those are all baby isopods, which are called mankai. For those of you that don't know, hiding in the soil. So for them, we are going to Drop in a bit of a more substantial or larger piece of zucchini. And these guys love their protein. So we're going to put a bit more fish flake there. And that should be good. Awesome. Okay, so the next isopods we are feeding are my gorgeous Armadillidium species albino Japan. Look at these guys. Man, it's like rose gold. They're just such beautiful animals and there's some nice variability between each individual look at all their frass there it's hilarious the little poops but yeah they're, they're doing go for it you know what i'm gonna say super well uh because they, yeah they really are <laughs> they're breeding um there's lots of them for an armadillidium species they're almost as prolific as a porcelio i would say it's pretty crazy so anyway, we're going to go ahead and give them their fish food here. You can see probably right away that they'll start eating it as it comes in. Um, these guys I'm going to offer a little more because I find they finish the food. I offer them super quick. Uh, yeah, let's just put a bit more because there's so many isopods there. I mean, look at them go already. They're getting down to business. Chewing and eating. Yep. Look at these ones. The guy's eating right now. And then, of course, lastly, we'll give them a nice piece of zucchini. I'll put it here. Awesome. Beautiful. All right, friends. So these are the wild-type Porcilio labis. So they're gray. Very interesting pods. Uh, also prolific and doing fantastic. Nice little manka right there. So let's go ahead and give these cool animals a nice feeding. We'll start them off with some fish food. Might even eat on camera for us. Yep, looks like they will. They're definitely very excited about that. You can see the antennae moving around. Very receptive. Give them a little more because these guys have or they're very protein hungry isopods so they're definitely gonna appreciate that i mean watch this Let's see what this guy does i don't know if he'll budge 
you might suddenly notice. Yeah, yeah. See? His little isopod senses are tingling. Come on, little man. Or woman. Come on, little one. I know you want to eat that. You can sense it. Yes, there we go. Nom, nom, nom. And there's a baby there too. Cool. But yeah, those are the Porcilio Levis gray wild types. All right, friends. These are one of the most colorful isopods in the hobby. The Armadillidium species Klugi Montenegros. As I mentioned before, some of mine, for some reason, seem to be exhibiting some mutation where the center stripes are not all yellow or white or like a cream yellow. It's very unusual, but then a few of them definitely are yellow, which is also kind of weird. I don't know. Very, very strange. But yeah, here they all are. They're doing well. I've also noticed lots of manka. Oh, Naughty isopods in the acorn shell. I'll let you get back at it. My gosh, there's always some isopods that come in and shag bomb the video, as I'll call it. But yeah, wonderful. Let's get some of our fish flake. Sprinkle that in there for them. I'll do a little bit more because there's a significant amount of isopods in here. Great. I take one of these, drop it there, and we're in business. Now that might even be a lot actually. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna take half the amount, put that there. Beautiful. If you recall, these are my Armadillo Officinalis Spain. I only have like three or four of them left from losing the culture. Um, I've just been crossing my fingers that there's at least a 1.1 in there and their number numbers will go back up. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and give them a tiny smidgen of zucchini and a little bit of fish flake. Beautiful. All right, friends, next we have one of my favorite species. This is the Porcilio wernerii. These guys are doing phenomenal. I'm seeing lots of growth on them. Some of them look ready to breed from this new generation that I took back from BC. Ooh, lovely. Some mites on their fish they didn't finish. That's a mouthful to say. That's what you want to see. Those are lots and lots of little springtails hanging out here, and they're going to help keep mold under control. That is an invader, and I'm going to gently pick them out right now actually I don't want my isopods falling out I mean I don't want my springtails falling out so just gently sorry guys let me just get this guy off for a second I think it was a little scaber I put him in my scaber culture anyways as I was saying are doing quite well there are quite a few of them some of the older ones have passed away but there's definitely enough in here that they're going to keep going strong and uh, hopefully start reproducing soon. So that's the exciting stuff with them. I'm going to go ahead and not lift every single piece of bark in the enclosure to show you every single pod in here. But we're going to definitely spray the corner down here a bit. I need to just spray one side a bit. They do still got a drier area over here. And yeah, we're gonna go ahead and give them some fish flake as well. I'll put some here, maybe some over here, some with this guy. The rest can all go over here. And then we're gonna put a piece of zucchini in there as well. Beautiful, Porcilio Werneri. All right, guys. These here are my Armadillidium granulatums. These animals have grown so much and I love the color. I think they're super underappreciated isopods. Oh, that's uh, that's rough. Poor little one. <laughs> but yeah, look at these animals. 
they actually get really big um, next to the Armadillidium gastroi. They're, as I've said in other videos, one of the largest Armadillidium species in the hobby. And I have quite a few of them. So if you're looking for them, <laughs> hit me up. But otherwise, uh, yeah, they're all pretty well reproductive size now. And um, we're definitely going to give them a good feed because they will probably completely consume that within one or two days. We'll definitely dress it and put some fish flake in the enclosure as well for them. Like so. Oh look, there's a the molt from one of them. And uh, yeah, they're already going down to eat. So I think we did a good job offering them some food. Wonderful. Armadillidium granulatum. All right, everyone, the next isopods we're going to feed here are my Cuberis pack chongs. I did notice quite a few mankai in here earlier. Um, one of the females was in a corner dropping a brood. So I'm happy to say that their numbers have gone up in the fight against the Nigris cristatus. But at some point, I really need to pick them all out and uh, separate them from their competitors. So, yeah, see... Nagris cristatus, which are great for vivariums, let me remind you. There's nothing wrong with them. They're just not something you want getting in your other cultures because then they'll outbreed them. And that's not good at all. I think that might be a Pak Chong Mankai on the side, but I could be wrong. Anyways, let's uh, lower that. We're going to give them a small piece of zucchini here and some fish food. You know the drill. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I'm also just going to spray this side down a bit. It's their moist side. I always keep it nice and wet. And let that side dry out a bit more. Wonderful. All right, everybody. Here we have one of my favorite isopod species. These are the Porcilio ornatus and the high yellow form of them. Uh, the juveniles and their little buddy are doing super well. I'm finding the chocolate mutation popping up. As you can see, it's like lighter and the dark ones there uh, which is kind of cool to see but yeah there's lots of them reproductive size i've seen lots of mankai in the moss here so it's nice to know that they're reproducing a new generation be like the third or fourth generation produced with me yeah not really sure what else to say about them other than uh, just that they're really awesome isopods and i enjoy keeping them and would certainly recommend others add them to their collection okay and then lastly, we'll just give them a little bit of fish flake there. Should be good. All right, guys. So the next species we're going to feed here are my Porcilio Scaber Orange. These are the beautiful common choice people use when they want to start keeping isopods. This is a very common beginner species next to the uh Lavis dairy cows as you can see he's gonna start enabling on me because they love protein what are you doing stop I'll give you fish food you can't eat me uh that was kind of weird <laughs> but yeah let's give them some zucchini uh there's a lot in here actually so i'll put a few pieces these are some more dried up pieces but that's not going to be a problem for them and then I don't know why I put the lid on this back on. Don't screw it with one hand. We'll sprinkle a little bit of fish flakes onto the wood and the zucchini. Oh, fancy, fancy, fancy. Perfect. Well, sorry, I'm going back and forth the zoom there. That should be good. All right, friends. So the next species we're going to feed here are my Armadillidium punticanas. Uh, if you remember my last video, I was showing you guys how these guys are pretty variable in coloration, but that I had very few of them left because uh, I had quite a few uh, dead on arrivals when I first got them. So most of them just look like vulgares, but as far as like genetic, oh, more dwarf whites. <laughs> as far as genetic diversity goes, uh, there's a lot of polymorphic expression. So what that means is you get a lot of different color variation between them. Kind of just looks like a uh, little uh, different colored jelly beans. There's like orange, red, brown, or tan colored, and the grays that you see here. So I'm really hoping that I have at least a pair 
and we'll be able to get them going. But it's not looking too promising. I think there's like four left in here right now that I've seen. So I'm really hoping that I'm not unlucky enough to not have a pair. We'll see. But yeah, um, put the zucchini there, a little bit of food, and that's more than enough. Again, the only reason I'm putting as much as I did, and I mean, obviously that wasn't a lot, was just because there's dwarf whites in there too, and there's going to be some species competition for food, obviously. So want to make sure that these guys get their food. Cool. All right, friends, these are my white Porcilio Lavis. This is what you get when you select all the animals that have just about no pattern on their bodies from the dairy cow cultures. Um, and uh, yeah, so this culture is doing quite fantastic. I mean, oh, that guy's molting. They're really great. I mean, Lavis are very protein hungry. And honestly, I will say they don't do well in bioactive enclosures because they do too well and they might even prey on or attack your pets. So I don't really recommend them for bioactive tanks. But as far as keeping isopods as pets goes, these are a fantastic choice. Um, they're very prolific and very easy to keep. So these are my Porcilia Lavis whites. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some, oh yeah, look at all the little manka. I'm gonna go ahead and drop some fish flake in here. You'll see how quickly they start going for it. Won't take long at all. Yep, there we go. Oh, little guys. So wholesome. And then we'll definitely put a piece of zucchini in there as well. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Huge zucchini incoming. Yeah, they really love that fish food though. They love the high high protein content in the fish food oh wow look at you mister being greedy you're gonna take that all on your own give the little guy some come on he's like what wow how dare you how dare you yeah it looks like you got more than you can handle there <laughs> well uh, we're okay little baby's getting some now go ahead buddy go ahead Little manka the mankai. Awesome. Well, those are Porcelio Lavis whites. All right, everyone. Next up, we have my Armadillidium Magic Potions. These are one of my favorite isopods. They're like the Magic Potion uh, Vulgare. Uh, I've noticed recently that they're really taking off. Hey, look, there's one of those little pink springtails. That's pretty cool. But yeah, check them out. If you've never seen a Magic Potion isopod, and there's a little manka too. They are very interesting looking. They're kind of like a transparent clear color with swirls of yellow and little Dalmatian dots. And each individual is very, well, variable. No two look the same, really. Uh, yeah, so I, I started off with just a few of these, but there's definitely quite a few at this point. And of course, as you know, the what I love to say is that they're doing well. And that is the case here. They are doing very well. So, you know the drill. And um, this is some cuttlefish bones. Usually a few hiding under there. Yep. That was a few little bits of seaweed they were eating. I've noticed the mankai hang out under them at night. And usually there is several mankai hiding here, but I guess we can't really see them right now. But yeah, so let's go ahead. First, the moss is a little drier than I want it to be. Oh, hi there. Let's go ahead and uh, spray that down a little. Give the whole enclosure a light spritz. I find that they like to be, I could be wrong, but I find that they like to be ever so slightly more on the humid side than a lot of other armadillidium. But uh, I don't know. What do I know? I just have like 30 or 40 kinds of isopods. <laughs> Anyways, it's all a learning process. But yeah, so put some food in like that and give them a piece of zucchini. And uh, yeah, we're off to the races, should be good. All right, next up are the Cuberis orange tigers. The mankai that were born in here a few weeks ago are growing super fast. I'll show you guys here. Uh, so there's some of the adults hanging out. 
Check out the size of those mankai now. They're doing so awesome. Super, super fast growth. So I'm hoping to have plenty of these soon. Um, look at all that frass. It's crazy. It's just those little, like, long rectangles. That's all their poops come out in a little square box package. This here is um, uh, seaweed. It's a little on the moldy side. I'm not too concerned. There's lots of springtails. I just don't want it getting too out of hand. Once these guys really get going, I'd love to isolate some of the ones that have more vibrant, striking pattern and color like this one. I think they look incredible. But for now, the focus is just on getting their numbers up and, uh, you know, just getting them to just really grow and do well. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if there'd be any on here. I need to get a few more spring tills in here, I think. It'd be nice to have some extra. But, yeah, things in here are looking good. So... Because they have some seaweed in there already, I'm not going to put much zucchini. Literally just going to draw up like this. But they really like the protein, so I will put a bit more fish food. I'm just going to sprinkle it on top of the bark. So it's kind of going to stay drier longer. And I know that at night, they're going to come up here and have a little feast. So there we go. Those are my Cubaris orange tigers. Okay, friends, so the animals you see in here are my Armadillidium maculatum France line. These are the zebra isopods. I love this line from France because of the variability I have in the colony. As you can see, this one's pretty much spotted instead of striped. Um, and they get a little bit larger than your typical Armadillidium maculatums or zebras. So yeah, check them out. They're doing super well. Uh, it looks like there's maybe even some lighter colored ones mixed in there. Oh, sorry. Hey, guys. Bit of a love triangle going on there. Uh, this is a little piece of seaweed again that you see because I've been offering them some of that. A few mankai hanging out on there with some springtails. Well, yeah. As you see, they're doing fantastic. You know the drill. Let's go ahead and give them some zucchini. Yeah, I guess I can have another piece. It's not that much. Again, it's just taking into account that the... Uh, Seaweed is still there, so they have lots of food. But we'll give them some protein with that that omega-1 freshwater flake food. Perfect. Put some on top. See, are they going to go for it already? Mm, maybe. I'm too busy mating. But yeah, everything in here is looking awesome. Let's move on. Hi right, guys, these are my Armadillidium Sordidum Tangerines. I haven't really been like focused on them and I've noticed they're really picking up. That's kind of hilarious. I thought there'd be a bunch under there, but they're really picking up in population. Like there's quite a few of them. I think most of them seem to be hiding in the substrate, but even at night I saw there was like a ton of mankai hiding so um yeah it's pretty sweet to see how they're doing or that they're doing so well i don't see any here i don't know at, at night they all just surface and crawl around everywhere and you can see the little white guys running around because they're so pale in comparison to the adults but yes they are a very nice little isopod if you want an armadillidium species that has a very nice color great choice all right, guys, no need to be afraid. Probably light sensitive. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and drop a piece of zucchini in and some fish food for the little isopods. And uh, yeah, moss feels pretty wet, so we're good to go. Okay, guys, these are my Armadillidium gastroi. They are known to be the largest species of Armadillidium in the hobby. These guys are doing super well. I think I pointed it out last time. I've noticed that I seem to have two different variations. I don't think it's just the difference between adults and offspring. Some of them are in fact kind of a more mint green dorsally and the others are bright yellow. So I think that's super neat to see. Lots of springtails running around there too. Yeah, they're, they're doing quite well. I added some bark from outside recently that I collected in a clean, safe area in a forest. I, uh, I'll make a video about that. We're going to do a video on collecting, um, you know, botanicals and uh, 
things to add to your isopod enclosures safely from outside. But yeah, they're they're really doing fantastic. I, I expect that we'll be getting a few broods of mankai soon. So yeah, these are a very rewarding species to keep. And you can see even between the young ones, this is how I know it's two variations. Some of the really small guys are bright yellow while the rest are that lighter mint color or, you know, kind of mint green. So we know that there is in fact two phenotypes happening here and it's not just like some take time to develop the yellow. All right, guys, these are my T-negative armadillidium albinos and my lone orange Porcilio expansus, the only survivor that I have left. Uh, I think it's just a lovely, I can't quite tell. It might be a male. The Europods seem a bit long there on the end, and that's how you can distinguish the sex of them. Females don't really have very long Europods. The males get really long. Same observed on the Hoffman Seggies, Hassies, and the P. Magnificus. So uh, we'll see, because the orange expanses get quite big. But yeah, it's kind of wholesome to this one isopod just lives with the uh, T-negative albinos. Anyways, these guys are doing super well. Uh, lots of mankai you can see there. And uh, yeah, quite a few more there as well. They're really nice albino. If you want something that's like, really they just look like little pearls. They're so light colored. And uh, they've been enjoying the wood. I've been giving them also some just some decaying wood from the forest. I believe it was some maple wood but yeah you can see they're very pale when you compare them to the um, albino japans very different isopod altogether so yeah um i might overturn this one piece of bark here since the expansus is moving i'm sure that we'll find a lot more so you can see a few extra individuals yeah there you go they're very neat looking isopod. I really like them a lot. But yeah, so anyways, we'll go ahead now and offer them some food. So we'll give them a little bit of fish food here. Put some over here as well. And then we'll throw in small little piece of zucchini as well. Should be good. All right, friends, so the next species we're going to feed are my Porcilio flavomarginatus, which are actually one of my favorite types of isopod. The thing I really like about these guys is they are super active for a Porcilio. They're always on the move, and it's just really entertaining to watch them. These are all mostly juveniles. I had a few of my adults die off, but uh, there's definitely quite a few in here that oh, are going to do just fine to keep the colony going, so... Yeah, and it looks neat because it's almost as if they have this like shine or they're glistening, but that's actual pattern on their back. So very, very nice isopods there. Just going to gently tip that. That's on their kind of more dry side. I did just spritz the enclosure and re-moisten the moss here. So go ahead now and give them a piece of zucchini. And I'm going to dress this piece of wood here <laughs> with some food. So they should, they should do well with that. Okay, perfect. All right, everybody, these are my just standard Armadillidium maculatums or zebra isopods and our lovely dairy cow who has been in here for almost two years, which goes to show that a single Lavis can live to be two years of age at least. This animal is impressive in size and I feel like we asked for name suggestions last time and I don't know if I chose one, but let me know in the comment section down below what you think we should name our solo girl here. Uh, it is a female, I'm pretty sure. Where did you go? I think. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. But lovely isopod. Trying to think of a name. It'd be like Moo Bell, Dairy, whatever you like. Moo Moo. You come up with something. Give the comments or the suggestion thumbs up and maybe we can do a vote in my community page when I pick all the names and see what people think we should start calling that isopod. But yeah, you see me there just sprinkling some uh, fish food in. I'll put in a piece of zucchini for the whole lot of them. They're doing pretty awesome. Um, you can kind of see the difference between them and the uh, larger France line. But yeah, you can't go wrong with the maculatums. They're probably one of the best beginner armadillidium species. So wonderful. Let's move on. 
All right, friends, so the next species or morph we're going to feed here are my Porcilio Scaber Party Mix. This is literally just a large enclosure full of different colored and variable uh, Porcilio. There's some like different uh, black and brown Dalmatians. A lot of them are hiding right now, which kind of makes it hard to show you. There's one orange. Uh, I think there's a white one here. Yeah. There's also like a kind of tanned one. That one actually does have some orange Dalmatian on it. I know that there's a few that are white and black. Just really nice. Um, lots of mankai, so it'll be nice to see how lots of these develop over time. The numbers are definitely picking up. There was a lot of them, but I actually sold quite a few just because there's surprising high demand for these. So, yeah, they're doing well. Let's go ahead and give them some fish food. Again, your Porcelio scabers are very protein hungry, same as the Lavis. So don't uh, hesitate to be a little generous with fish food and flake because they will eat it very quickly, probably more so than the vegetables. Um, obviously, don't put too much, but I know that there's a lot of isopods in here. I honestly don't know where they're hiding. It's probably just all the nooks and crannies in this wood because at night they're just pacing the whole enclosure looking for food. And then we'll also... Uh, well, hello. That one's already going for some fish flake and the baby, the mankais. We'll put some zucchini in there too. Awesome. Here we have the Porcilio Hoffman Seggies. And these are some of the largest isopods in the hobby. Um, males with their Europods can literally push like one and a half to two inches, I would say. These are larger juveniles. I think a lot of them are female, but there should be a few males in here just kind of chilling and hiding. Um, but yeah, they're definitely, there you go, it's a few males. They're really a nice, big, impressive isopod. I really, really love my Hoffman Seggies. And uh, I would imagine a lot of these females are probably carrying Mankai right now. So in any case, they're awesome. I think one of the tricks with this species is besides providing sufficient ventilation, they really like it dry. Same with the Hassies. So honestly, if you look here, you'll see that my substrate is practically bone dry. But then I'll go into this corner and that's where I have the moistened moss so they can go and retreat if they want some more moisture and humidity. And then usually when I feed them once a week, I'll gently spritz the leaf litter so that they have the opportunity to drink if they need to. The point is though, that they're kept pretty dry. I seem to have the most success doing that. Anyway, we'll go ahead and give them some fish food. And you can see that I'm kind of crumbling the flakes because otherwise we get those greedy guys that'll take a whole flake and run away with it. And then, you know, if they can isolate themselves fast enough, their little friends won't get any food. <laughs> they'll just sit and hide and eat. And then we'll put a little bit of zucchini in here as well. It's a more dry piece, but they'll go for it. Perfect. Okay, friends, next are my little Survivor Magnificus. Um, there's, I think, four or five of them, if I recall. And fortunately, you'll see that they're doing well and have grown quite a bit. There's one of the youngsters. This is one of my favorite species of isopod, too. They're really elegant. I love the, oh, sorry, the contrast between the white antennae, white legs, and the orange bodies. So one or two of these are the uh, original remaining females. And the rest are kind of their mankai that have grown up. So hopefully a few of those are male and uh, we'll have a little colony going in no time. Lots of springtails. I'm not really worried about that mold. Mold is really a big issue when there's a lot of it. And also when you have very few springtails to help combat it or bring it down. Also, obviously ventilation. But anyhow, you can see there's a decent amount in there and they're doing great. So let's go ahead and sprinkle some food for them. Not too much because there are very few isopods. And then we'll also put a few little bits of zucchini. I find they really like the skin. So even if it's not too fleshy, the parts, they go nuts for it. Okay, guys, next is sort of the uh, BC native or local culture. These were a bunch that I collected outside. Uh, these are isopods native to Vancouver area. Um, they're doing really well. There's just a bunch of them hanging out. And this culture has been going for well over a year as well. Yeah, they look good. So we'll go ahead now and give them a piece of zucchini and some fish food as well. Get 
also gently spritz a bit like that and perfect okay guys so the next isopods we're going to take a look at here and feed are my porcilio scaber calicos these guys look awesome i mean boom just look at that now the interesting thing about them is they are uh, color sex dependent so this morph only the females have that coloration whereas the males will be gray so unfortunately that's the way it is but at the same time it adds some cool variation between the animals and it's it's a neat way to know the sex of each individual as well now that being said there have been a few claims made where people have found males with color and i can totally see that being the case it'd be super cool to isolate a few of those males and try and uh you know pair them with females and see if you if it breeds true and you only get males of color i for one would love to see that but again i can appreciate the color you see here uh in the males and females of this morph of scaber so that all being said we're just going to gently place that back down and give them some food I go ahead and sprinkle some fish food in here now for these lovely animals they are happy to get food and then uh, i'm gonna go get some uh, zucchini and then we'll just drop a piece of zucchini in there as well perfect all right everyone this is one of my favorite isopods not for color for just appearance these are my armadillo officinalis grease and i have a few random ones that are light colored so i'm really hoping that this takes off and i can isolate a few they're just such a cute little isopod it's like they're the uh um armadillidium vulgar meets cuberis cross or something the one thing i really like about them as well is that they stradulate which is super interesting so if you pick them up and mess with them a little bit I'm not sure if this one's going to do it, but they make this little tss, 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 tss noise when they're disturbed. So that's super cool, too, because normally most of you would be used to seeing that in, you know, like tarantulas and scorpions, invertebrates like that. But no, there are isopod species that do it, too. Anyways, you won't stress them out too much. Let's go ahead and give them some fish food. A little bit more. There's a lot of isopods. And then a piece of zucchini. Perfect. All right, everyone. These are my Armadillidium nasatum peaches. Uh, there are... Oh, here we go. There's a few hiding there. Another uh, really nice variation of the nasatum. I did have a lot of them, and I found that... I don't know if they just, like, went into shock or something, but a lot of them may have sort of perished unfortunately uh, i did set them up a bit nicer now and i'm hoping that with the ones i still have in here they're going to make a comeback i mean a lot of them are hiding so i don't want to exaggerate that they're not doing well but i remember there being a lot more at one point so we'll see how they go um, there's probably a lot hiding in the moss too but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and give them a little bit of fish food here as well as a piece of zucchini so let's go ahead and do that now the food is in and i'm just gonna one-handed chop the zucchini because i'm skilled and i can hold the knife and do that perfect now some of you might know that i've been keeping these uh, lids in them so i can identify the isopods before i gently get them off check out all these female dairy cows that are carrying manka and their marsupiums. It's actually super cool to see that. So for those of you who don't know, isopods actually, the females have a, sort of a pouch, which is called marsupium, because they compare it to that of a, uh, well, marsupial or mammal. And so the females will actually carry their young under their bodies like so, until they're ready to be released into the enclosure. This is like a female with a bunch of younger mankai there. But yeah, so that glowing yellow is either the eggs or a developing young, which in this case it would be the young because uh, you can almost see the individual little guys. But yeah, that's super neat to see. So we're just gently going to coax these ladies 
off <laughs> the lid. I really need to get the label maker in here. Make sure there's no little tiny man guy on here that are gonna escape or get into a new culture. And we're in business. So yeah, this, uh, like I said before, the dairy cows or the lavis in general make incredible beginner isopods. So you really can't go wrong with these guys. Super easy to keep. Um, very, very prolific. So yeah, they're, they're really nice isopod. And there's tons of mankai in this enclosure. I see them at night scurrying about doing their thing. All right, yeah, there's a bunch of them there. But yeah, and again, Lavis is protein hungry, so we'll put some zucchini in there for them. That's really not that much. We'll put another piece. And we're also going to go ahead and give them lots of fish food. Perfect. Okay, Porcilio Lavis Dairy Cow. Okay, friends, so the next isopods we're going to be checking out here are my Armadillidium Ornirais. They look sort of similar to the Kluge Montenegros. Um, there's quite a few in here, and they were one of those isopods that I seriously just struggled to breed. And if you look closely, ladies and gentlemen, we have Mankai. Honestly, I'm so happy. It's just ridiculous. Like, I would import them from Europe, and the first time I had a few DOAs, and then I had a bunch, and I swear, I think somehow they were all male, just nothing happened. So I got a bunch from my friend Trevor out on Victoria Island while I was still in Vancouver. Finally, once they got old enough, they just started breeding. So very happy to see some mankai of this species. I, it was getting a bit frustrating. I had no idea what I was doing wrong that they weren't interested in reproducing. But yeah, these are the lovely Armadillidium ornias. Okay, everyone, these are my Porcilio prunosis, prunosis, prunosis. Uh, this is my little party mix group. They were the ombres that were kind of a mystery thing that I've talked about in the past. That guy's shedding. Um, but yeah, there's just a whole big mix of different color variations. So they're really fun. Another great, easy species to keep. And I find that they're quite drought tolerant. So they tend to do well in more like arid setups as long as there's some moist retreat. So even like if you were going to keep them in sort of bioactive enclosure with like beardies or something i think they, they would even do quite well with a leopard gecko too but yeah let's go ahead and give them their fish food they're gonna probably go crazy eating right away as they always do so we can watch them right now yep called it <laughs> they just scurry around as soon as they find food they stop and eat but yeah these are a lot of fun Wow, sharing is caring, guys. I'm impressed. Here, I can have a bit more. <laughs> okay. Good stuff. All right, guys. So lastly here, we have two uh, cultures of Porcilio Hassi. Uh, lastly, Hassi. That's hilarious. Can't deny it. I can't ignore that. But yeah, they're a very nice isopod too. One of the Spanish giants. You can see there's a young male there. The zero pods are those little tiny sticks at the end. They're larger than the other ones, which for the most part appear to be female. There's another male right there. So you can see the difference. Male, female, female, most likely female. But yeah, these are another species that likes to be pretty dry. I did just give them a bit of a spray. So the moss here is moisture and I did spray their uh, decaying wood there. Let's go ahead and give them some protein. Perfect. And then I'll put a small piece of zucchini in the enclosure as well. Awesome. Porcilio Hassi. All right, guys. So these ones were supposed to be the Porcilio Hassi light. I don't really see a big difference between them. Oh, sorry between them and the other ones honestly but i am keeping them separate regardless um but yeah there's a nice male europods are big on there another male there's a lot of males here i'm really hoping that one there's a female but i 
I'm a bit doubtful. That one is female, which is good. And then I think there's a few somewhere else. I've definitely seen others. Lots of males in there though. So we'll have to see how things go here. But yeah, um, they're doing all right. So you know the drill. Go ahead and give them some food. And then a small piece of zucchini. They're really small because there's not a lot of them in there and that should be good wow guys there we have it we just uh did all of them now i will add that i didn't do every single type of isopod i keep the tuberillos are hiding and i didn't want to dig them out just for the video so we kind of left them out of the video unfortunately and a few other random tiny tiny cultures that I have very few of but most of them are in the video so i really hope you guys like that well friends, there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed this isopod tour and feeding video. Now I wanted to ask you guys something that I've been thinking about doing and uh, your comment will let me know. I've considered doing a weekly isopod feeding video. So I feed my isopods once a week. So I figured what I could do is literally give you guys an isopod feeding video every single week. It'd be a lot of work on my part and if you think that it's too often, that's fine, let me know in the comment section down below. But if you think that it'd be fun to have a weekly, you know, like 30 minute long isopod feeding video, comment down below, pod week. It'll let me know that you guys wanna have a weekly isopod video. So, without further ado, thanks so much for watching everyone. My name is Dion, and I look forward to seeing you guys in another video again soon. And if you wanna see more isopod related content, click the link above to my isopod playlist. Awesome.